All right, here we have this problem, which is from OpenStax Calculus Volume 1. And we're looking at uh, section 2.4. So, um, okay, um, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to uh, sketch the graph of a function that satisfies these criteria. And we'll read through them. Let me first just make an XY plane here with the coordinate axes, axes. Okay, so here's the xy plane. All right, so this function here is discontinuous at 1. What's happening at 1? I don't know yet, but um, something's happening. Why is it discontin discontinuous? Well, the limit is negative 1. No, limit as x approaches negative 1 is negative 1. And the limit as x approaches 2 is 4. Hmm. All right, well, let's go through this then. I will, I'm going to make a little dot here. This point here is negative 1, negative 1. Now, the limit exists, so I'll just go with it. I'll just show the limit existing by putting a little, but by showing the graph, the limit from both sides exists. At x equals 2, um, or as x approaches 2, the limit is 4. So I'll put a circle up there, and that, that one right there will be 2, 4, and the limit exists. But at, it's discontinuous at 1. It doesn't tell us what. Why is it discontinuous at 1? Um, you can pick whatever. Are you in the mood for a vertical discontinuity? Let's do that. But you say, what? No, I don't want to do that. But I don't know, whatever you want. Let's, put, let's, let's make a, a vertical discontinuity. And um, maybe that's why it's discontinuous. But then some of you might say, well, why is it a vertical discontinuity? Why not a removable discontinuity? And I'm, I'm going to say, whatever you, you know, whatever you feel like doing. I'm trying to get the colors Correct. It's like half of my work here. Does this satisfy these requirements? And I'd say, yes, it does. Hmm. But then someone might say, well, hold on. What are you talking about? And also, look, I could do this. Oh, it's defined for all X. So I need to also make little dots here. I need to define it. Eh, actually, this one's not correct because I have this removal discontinuity. I mean, this infinite discontinuity, and I haven't defined it. It's defined for all x. I, I could do that, but let me just get rid of this one. I was trying to be fancy. Let's just say it's it's discontinuous at zero. I'm going to put an open circle here, and I'm going to arbitrarily pick another place to define the function. And also, where I put the open circle at x equals 1, that was sort of arbitrary where I, I mean, it definitely was where the y value goes. So, um, that, that fits the bill. I mean, it could be discontinuous at other places. And by the way, for, for these over here, you could have, you could have that. I mean, you could have the circle sitting there, but that does it. Um, I don't know. I didn't think that was such a good problem somehow, but let's look at the next one. And the following exercise is suppose that f of x is defined for all x. For each description, sketch the graph. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm going to steal the, the xy plane. So I don't have to redo that. Okay. Discontinuous at x equals 2, but continuous elsewhere. Would limit x approaches 0, what half? So, um, 
as x approaches zero, we have the limits one half. And it's continuous there. So um, I think it just looks like this, except it's discontinuous at two. At two, what happens? Maybe there's a hole in the graph. Put it up here. And let's define it like that. I mean, there's a lot of things that are, I can just sort of fill in. And um, so, I mean, why did I pick two, three? Why not two, four or two, five? But anyway, I did that. Um, it's defined everywhere. So I have to put a dot here. Um, the limit of f of x as x approaches zero is one half. And there's nothing really to see there. There's no hole in the graph because it's continuous there. Okay, so I, I guess I better label the axis and then that'll finish this. So let me zoom out for both of those problems. Those are just examples. Your graph can look different. All right, so that's all.